bit more. Um, but again, I don't know if it's, you know, we use our legs pretty good in camp. Um, uh, I don't know if it's my age. I don't know what it is. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't, you know, I mean, AB brought it every round, but I've been pressured every round by other fighters too and used my legs better, you know? Again, I don't know. Brona fought a 32-year-old Paulie Malignaggi. I mean, I, I, I'm still talented at a high level, but, um, m you know, it's possible that my legs may not be the same as they were when I was 25, 26 season. But, but you know, I'm not going to say did this and that because then it would be discrediting the good things that he did because there were some good things he was doing as well. Um, would you like a rematch? Um, yeah, it'd be nice. It'd be nice to get a rematch. Um, it'd be cool, you know. Uh, you know, I felt very disrespectful going into the fight. You know, uh, I was a champion. I'm the hometown fighter. I got paid less. I mean, I'm not that I should complain for about a seven-figure payday, but come on, man. You know, uh, I got paid less. A lot of my people couldn't get their tickets uh, because you know, I don't know who got the floor seats. I know nobody on the undercard sold tickets. I mean, I'm gonna show you that because what tickets I was on the undercard. Nobody came for Saki Obika tonight. Nobody came for Seth Mitchell and Jonathan Banks tonight. They're not. They're not local. You know. Um, not that their fights weren't entertaining, but you know, I saw them in the locker room. They were entertaining, but you know, it, it just wasn't that kind of party. You know. So uh, I don't know who got those those floor seats that my people couldn't get their hands on, even to buy. Um, even some of my own people, I wanted to buy them from some of my my trainers and stuff. Uh, for their families, I couldn't get my hands on them. You know. So I, I felt like, you know. How are you limiting my star power by uh, by limiting what I'm selling? You know, oh, I'm the hometown guy. I'm the defending champion. Um, but uh, on top of which, I, I got paid less. I mean, I don't know. I don't. We'll see. I'm gonna go back and uh, I'll see if I if I feel like training this way again for another training camp. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I'm, I'm to say I'm insulted. I'm very calm right now. But to say I'm insulted is an understatement. You know. Um, at the top it off, and this decision came as well. So, you know, uh, I'll see. You know, it'd be cool to get a, a, a rematch. It would, but I mean, I don't know that. <laughs> I don't know that I want to live through another training camp either. So I don't know. I'll, I'll go back and think about it. You know, right now we just fought, and um, I know so many things are going through my mind. But um, we'll see. You know, we'll see. Hey, Polly. Good fight tonight. Yeah. Um, I heard your comments in the ring to uh, Jim Gray after the fight saying that the 117, 111 scorecard from Tom Shrek, you felt like that, you know, I, to use your words, that, that that judge was in Al Heyman's pocket. And I'm wondering if you regret that because there were many, many of us at ringside would have that exact same score in favor of Broder. Yeah, yeah. Well, 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 no, I mean, I, I, I made some comments to start the press conference. Um, yeah, I was a bit emotional in the moment. Um, I, don't, I wouldn't say... Um, I wouldn't say Shrek was in Heyman's pocket, but it's just funny how in boxing, the more politically connected guy always gets the close decisions. You know, uh, it just it never goes the other way. You know what I mean? Like when do you see the politically not connected guy get the close decision? So it starts to become, it starts to feel like it's a little bit more than coincidence. You know, what I mean? it, you never see the other guy who's not connected at all get the close decision. So you know, it, it just starts to feel like a little bit more than coincidence. But to say he's in Heyman's pocket is yeah, it, 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 it's probably a reach. You know, but um. Shrek and everybody else at ringside who might have had a 117, 111. I mean, I, there's probably a lens craft at a Pearl Vision Center not too far from me. It's a pretty good place to start. One other question, Paul. You said that uh, you weren't sure about having a rematch. You weren't sure about that, but you also said maybe you wouldn't fight again. Do you, do you still want to fight again? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I'm in the moment. I just I just fought. So, I mean, I'm, I don't know. Uh, is it annoying going to a, pres uh, a training camp? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I used to look forward to fighting. I used to look forward to to train for a big fight, man. But now I do feel like every time a training camp is coming, I'm like, oh man, I got the next two or three months are really gonna suck, you know. So, so you know, I don't know, I don't know. But then again, a rematch would appeal to me, you know. Uh, I would love to get back in the ring and do this again. And um, you know, if 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 Broner wants to, you know, I wouldn't say right the wrong because he got the win, but you know, make a make it more of a statement and um, and try to win more clearly and prove that he's a competitor, you know, I would definitely uh, be up for thinking about it at least, but but uh, we'll see.